Welcome back to another episode of the Bellied Up podcast presented by Fleet Farm. Charlie, I have a beautiful co-host, Charlie. He got mad at me last time for not introducing him. Charlie Barons, everybody, the pride of Wisconsin. Hey. The man to walk minute host. The... Well, I, you know, the Midwest is sexy comic. Wow. Thank Miles. Thank you. Charlie Barron's everybody. Wow. Um, listen, that, that was very kind intro. And I am joined here by my um, absolutely stunning co-host, Miles, the you betcha guy. Um, he has been working out with his personal trainer. And I can tell you don't I have can to bring see, that up every single time. Charlie. I can see. Oh, and I'm also not supposed to mention birds or insects in this <laughs> episode, too. So I'm not going to do that. Um, it's well, if we go to the track record, the last yeah. however many bellied up podcasts. Yeah. And you bet your radio podcast. Uh-huh. The amount of times you've brought up birds has been astonishing. I'm sorry that I have hobbies. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Well, what is your, what is the thing that you do for joy? Let's, let's well, talk about you. I mean, that's a great segue, Charlie. We got yeah. some pull tabs oh, in front of us. Baby. I am a pull tab investor. I have get, heard. Uh, I have heard. I am trying to get you into pull tab investing. So okay. in let's, you, you let's do a some. side bet on this. Okay. Who's I, gonna, who's 20 gonna pull bucks, more? 20 bucks for whoever pulls more. Okay. So we'll do a side bet. This is not great radio. So how about you go first? Uh, you're right. This is very visual and we don't have a stand. So it's not like we can talk. Uh, you know what? Let's just, let's just do one to one, one to one. You just go like this with the, like a telephone, the old style. Like, this. oh yeah, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work. Okay, yeah. I was listening. We got it. Like, this- when your mom. When your mom's doing cooking dinner and she's trying to talk to on the phone, she's got the phone pressed between her shoulder and her ear. That's what we're trying to do right now with the mic. It's not really yeah, going that good. It's harder, I tell you that right now. <laughs> you look like a mom, Midwest mom right now, though. It's kind of work. All right, go ahead, Charlie. All right. Um, again, just like uh, before, we're at Big Irv's here in Horace, North Dakota. Bar is bumping, having a good time. Charlie's opening up his pull tabs. Yeah, th- that's better. You announce. You're you're the play by play announcer what, of my pull tabs. Charlie, what's your philosophy going into pull tab investing? Yeah, you know, so basically I just like to give it a little uh a yank and a shank here and see what comes out. I mean I mean and, uh, I, I didn't ask you to talk about your bathroom routine. I asked you to discuss your pull tab routine. You know what? Here, how about this? I got <laughs> No more phone. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I'm uh, three in, got nothing. Fourth one, nada. Uh, fifth one, uh, nada, nada, nada. Oh, my gosh. You know, this is great radio, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Five, five bucks. bucks. Five dollar. Bing, bing, bing. You got to rip those tabs off, though. Uh, yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. 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 Um, it, you know, so are we at, we are betting on this, right? There's a, there's a $20 side bet on this. Yes. yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, all right. Almost there. He's getting folks. down to the end. He's only Almost made $5. There. This is terrible radio. Almost there. Almost um, there. I need my more. arm's getting tired okay. holding your microphone. Just relax. Just relax. We got a great show for you today, folks, <laughs> by the way, on the You Betcha uh, well, I, I did. <laughs> Damn it! This is the bellied up podcast. I know the bellied All right, up. Last yeah. one. Last one. This is the lucky one, right? This is the one when when your bartender pulls out a pull tab and calls it the lucky one. You know it's gonna it's be a not, winner. Or not. not quite. The old swindler's trick, right there. This is the lucky one, though. That's a five dollar deal right there. So that's I am still in it. There we go. And now it is time. For so, miles. So what I love to, about pull tab investing is anyone yeah, can get into it. Thank you very much Charlie. for taking uh, the. I should have cleared that off. You know, never just leave your spent pull tabs on the bar for the bartender to clear off. You Sometimes know? they have a little bucket that you throw it in, which is nice. Well, that is nice. I like kind of like for your crab, a little uh, when you, muscles when you crack the deal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, miles. One, nothing. Two. Nada. You never told me what you said. Yank and spank. What was your your mentality? What was talk me through your mentality? When I already for, I already forgot what I said. I know, but 
talk talk what? me through your pull tab strategy when you're at the bar. Oh well, I yeah yeah yeah. I I just I just I I crank through them. I don't necessarily enjoy the process as much as I should. And that's really a life lesson. When you when you're doing the pull tabs, you've spent money on this. You really want to live in the moment and enjoy each pull. You know, it's just a, w- speaking of not living in the moment. Uh, w- you ever watch golf, you know, and you hear yeah. the golf announcer? Yeah. How do you think a golf announcer would announce watching you pull your tabs right now? I don't know. Let's hear it. Okay. He's stepping up to the tab. He pulls nothing. Nothing there. But it moves form. too fast for golf announcers. Yeah. Well, I know it's it's too quick. You you gotta you gotta take your time with the yeah, pole. Gotta go. He's you know? lining it up. He's lining up. Oh, he switched it. There, he's picking one up. He's flipping it over. Doing a little kiss. You really, really kiss him? Huh? You kiss your pole tabs? Yeah, once in a while. Do you? Yeah. Oh, it's good for you. Anytime you're trying to switch up your mojo, you gotta try stuff like that. Are you actually going to pay me the $20 after I win? Well, we'll see. Depends. Are you, are you, uh, do you keep your, your bets? You man of your word or not? You're asking if I have a bookie or what? No, I'm just saying, are you, are you good on it? can't disclose that information. Charlie. You're one of those guys that just bets because. Sports betting isn't legal here in North Dakota, so. And wh- why not? Uh, we're just always way slower than the rest of the world here yeah. in North Dakota. Same with Wisconsin. We'll catch up. All um, right, I got two left. Two left. Nope. Last one. <laughs> Nothing. Nada. I'll take well, that $20. we spent 40 bucks. We made 5 That's probably the equivalent to pull tab investing right there. The best part is you spent 40 bucks. I made 25 So... I'm feeling really great about well, this. Well, actually, situation. you owe me 20 bucks for your half of the pull tabs, so. So I made five. Um, Thank you. What, in your mind, what do you think of electronic pull tabs? Or like the little le- I, electronic yeah, machines? Yeah, I know they got them. I mean, they're a cash cow for the bars. That's for sure. But I'm not as big of a fan. I of feel them. like they have a little bit of a stigma, like you're extra degenerate if you're going to sit at the machine and just hit the button all, all night long, you know? Well, it's like when you go to the casino. When you go to the casino, uh, are you a slots guy? Are you a blackjack guy? I feel like I've asked you this before and you're a slots guy. Or am no, I imagining uh, that? I like playing roulette. Okay, that's, that, that's great. That's fun. Um, Yeah. I'm all about that, I, those I, games. Yeah, I, I like those games as well because it's really, it's there's no strategy involved with r- roulette, really. Yeah. There's a little bit, but not too bad. Michael Jordan would probably disagree, but <laughs> Michael Jordan isn't spending his time with roulette. He's playing blackjack for high stakes or something like that. You know? Okay. I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. Are you a cigar guy? Speaking of Michael Jordan. Uh, I, I used to like cigars more, but then I stopped smoking them for a long time. And then I, what I don't like is when you wake up in the mo- morning. Leather mouth is what uh, I like to call and it. And then yeah. you're, you're doing this. Cotton mouth, yeah. leather mouth. It's tough. Yeah. Do you I, like cigars? I, I like cigars. I think that they're, it's much like a, which is tough because I absolutely despise craft beer drinkers in the sense when they're way over t- over the top, right? The all the to- smelling it, licking the outside of the glass, swirling it, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. I hate that. I yeah. hate that part of, of people who like IPAs, right? Right, right. Cigars have a similar culture, which is tough for me because cigars are cool, right? Like if you're smoking a cigar, you instantly look cooler. Like yeah. Anyone who says like, ah, smoking's not cool. Smoking, <laughs> you look sweet. <laughs> like smoking, you look yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. even like movie characters that are smoking a cigarette. Right. Look so cool. Right. You know? Right. And so it's like, ah, you know, I want to smoke a cigar, look cool. But you can't get too into it where you're smelling them and getting, you know, I, I've done that before. I got the humidifier before and yeah. done all that. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. And then, there, you know, you, you do the smell and then you cut it with the, the and they, well, they you know frown upon m- you if you bite it off. Well, you know? Do you know that there's multiple types of cuts as well? I I I honestly did not. Well, I know that there's a little uh, you can poke it. 
yeah. instead of cutting it, right? And then yep. you can snip it, and then you can bite it off, which I typically would do. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then you some people just let it sit in their mouth and get that yeah. little mouse just, nicotine buzz yep. going. A lot of people in their golfing like to do that. Yeah. Just have it in their mouth. Yeah, it's it's it looks it's cool. Kind of, it's, <laughs> you know, you can't argue that it looks cool. What I, doesn't look cool is you know when I'll, you're like I'll in the wet. hospital. Yeah, yeah. Like when the cigar gets wet on the end, you know. I was at a wedding and uh, someone was smoking a cigar on the dance floor, and they're like, "You want some of this?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." I'll, what I'll, wedding are you at where they're smoking on the dance floor? Hopefully, it was outside. It was like an outdoor. They had a tent or whatever. So, and they had a they had a cigar rolling station, which oh, is pretty the, cool. Okay, so you're at some fancy ass, bougie ass. It was a wedding. really nice wedding. Yeah, yeah. And um, but they were smoking them on the dance floor and I took um, a, a rip out of it and it was just all I basically kissed this fellow. Yeah, you just it well, was, yeah, I got he a saliva you, sample. Then he put it back in his mouth and you got your. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that was one where I put it right in my mouth and and I it took it right out. It was there was nothing good about that. It was like eating a, 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 a it was like a bowl of Wheaties. Well, the problem was cigars. So I'm kind of an all gas, no brakes guy. That's why I Cancer. like drinking Bush Light. Yeah is you're supposed to it's supposed to take like two hours to smoke a cigar and i just get antsy you know how quick are you smoking these cigars well i'm just saying like even if you're going puffing it fast it's still like it still takes too long you know what i mean yeah, I mean, and, and really, it's a social uh, situation where you're supposed to have a nice long conversation, and, maybe pair it with a, a whiskey of some sort. Yeah, and you know? I'm not, I'm not I, I hate the idea of not finishing a cigar as well. You feel Ooh. kind of like a, a, a dummy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But if it's like, okay, well, I have to go do something else, and it's yeah. been an hour and a half. Yeah. You got to, yeah, you got to move on. Yeah. And speaking of moving on, Charlie, I think we should get to some callers. Oh, yeah. Do let's do that. Let's, let's ask the callers. Or let's have the callers ask us. Maybe they'll have a cigar question. Maybe. I'll let you take that. I'm really hoping we get a cigar question. I think we're ready for that. So um, we're bellied up to the bar right now. We're going to have some other people belly on up. We're going to take some callers. Hello. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who is this? Oh, this is Joe over here. Joe, how are you? Where are you calling from? I'm fantastic. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, I'm calling from... I'm calling from, I'm, I'm here at Nebraska city, but I'm originally from Wisconsin. Ah, nice. We're in Wisconsin. Uh, you heard of Ashland? Oh yeah, sure. In fact, I was just up in Bayfield. Yeah. Oh no way. Really? Where at? Yeah. Well, I was, uh, staying <laughs> right across from, you know, where big top Chautauqua is, right? Of oh yeah. Yeah. You go down that two mile drag right across the street. I was staying at that deal. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ashland, beautiful this time of year. I, I swam in the Lake Superior oh, yeah. yesterday, and boy, is that refreshing. It's nice and cold. Miles, what's wrong? Oh, Miles yeah. is, I just want you to know that Miles is not appreciating no, our I'm, talk about No, I'm the, just laughing. <laughs> I'm just picturing Charlie, you just going and doing laps in Lake Superior. Yeah, I did know? a dip. Yeah. I did a dip. I'm just, that's all. I, this is a great visual of you swimming. I did the breaststroke. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, what's on your mind? Belly up to the bar with us. Okay, so I do have something to ask you guys. Yeah. Now, my my 21st birthday is coming up here in about uh, three weeks there. Oh, okay, so uh -oh. you're about to have your first sip of alcohol. <laughs> well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Very first. I am in college. You are. You're where are you? Your very first beer here coming up in three weeks. Never had one before, I'm sure. Okay, so twenty first birthday question. What is what is the question? So I'm being, I'm I was thinking I was going to go out to a bar and get me my first uh, legal beer. Yeah. And I was wondering from the experts, what do I look for in a uh, in a good bar? What do I want to see when I first walk in the door? Oh boy, I'm glad you brought this up, well, Miles. Yeah, take it away. Yeah, number one, you're gonna want to see a very low ceiling. We're in a bar actually right now that it's probably what an eight foot ceiling, Charlie. Maybe. Yeah, I'd say this is eight foot, and, and it's got dollars taped to the ceiling. You're gonna want to see dollars on the ceiling. Do you want dollars on the ceiling? Absolutely. So that's number one. You want to find a bar that's got a nice low ceiling. If you bring your like buddy who played D3 college basketball, he might hit his head. Yep. You know, that's what you want when you're walking in. 
Also, you you want to look for a, a, a an old boat engine hanging on the wall somewhere, or or a deer antlers. So either an old boat engine, deer oh, antlers, yeah. and if you find a bar with a bunch of old spent props drilled to the wall. Uh, you know you're in the right place, okay? We can't tell you the right bar to choose. The right bar has to choose you. Yes. All we can do is give you these guide and, points. And here's how you're going to know that's the sealer, right? It's got the vibes. It's got the low ceiling. Got stuff on the wall. It's got pull tabs, shake of the day, all that stuff. But you know you're at the right bar when the bartender has got so much attitude that she's snarky, she's sarcastic at you. If you found a bartender that's, uh, you know, giving you a hard time, you know, you're at the right bar. Yeah. You want someone giving you the business right away. You don't you want to walk in like you own the place and you want them to dress you down immediately. And they don't care if it's your birthday, you know, and if they put in front of you a shot of Malort for your 21st birthday. You know you're in the right spot. You know you're in the right spot. If you if they put that gasoline right in front of you and expect you to take it down right there and then, boy, you are not walking out of that by, bar by yourself. And by that, I don't mean you're going home with someone to do any weird sort of fornication or whatever. What I mean oh. is that they are going to be assisting you out of that bar. By the way. So what? Yeah. I'm going to be taking my keys. What do you yes, most look forward to? They will be taking to? your keys, absolutely. What what do you most look forward to on your twenty first here coming up? So, so on my twenty first, what I'm most looking forward to is really just having that first, you know, bush light at a uh, bar. Oh, bush go. light? That's the first That's beer smart. you're going with. I, it, that that is the drink. That's what you're gonna do. Well, on choose. your twenty first, it's a great warm up, you know? Because at oh, yeah, I've been told it's the nectar of the gods, you know. It is. So you're going to want to start your night off with the little nectar of the gods, and then the rest of the night, you don't know where it's going to go. Because the thing about bachelor parties and your 21st birthday is you're going to start drinking beer, and by the end of the night, all you're going to be doing is shot after shot. So you got to be ready for that. You got to pace yourself. All right. You got a group of buddies that are coming out with you? Yeah, what's the game plan here? Uh, no, it's, it's kind of just me. All my friends are back home. I'm out here for an internship, so... Oh, uh, what's the internship? I'm, I'm working at an orchard doing... Uh, kind of making educational activities and things. Oh, that's cool. So what does that consist oh, yeah. of? What's an educational activity at an orchard look like? Well, so the first thing I did here was, you know, it's an orchard, so they give out tours. Okay. And um, the tours look like they were made by a seventh grader. So my first project <laughs> there was to just make them better. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Just immediately insulting the place you have an interest in. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great move. Okay. What else? What else you got planned? Um, so the other thing I have planned is uh, it's called Pollinator Play Days. And uh, basically, we're going to have a bunch of kids come out and we're going to talk to them about um, honeybees and how uh, different orchard fruits are produced. Ah, oh, that's really cool. You know, a lot of people don't know how important those honeybees are to uh, making the whole thing go around, those pollinators. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, in the they're... educational materials? As a matter of fact, it is. Yeah, oh, nice, nice. Did you put it in, or did, was did the seventh grader get that in there for you? Yeah, you know that one. That one was me. Got so, it. what's your go-to spice up the educational thing? What's the go-to? Is it interactive games? Is it what? What kind of? How do you spice up boring? Because you can only talk about bees pollinating stuff for so long until you know kids are getting bored with that. So, how are you doing that? And by that, Miles means he immediately got bored as soon as we started talking about <laughs> bees pollinating. I was one of those kids who would have got bored with the, that type of tour. So how are you going to keep me interested? Oh, well, so it's definitely going to be, it's got to be hands-on. Kids got to be doing something, so right? So kids are going to be so hands-on with, with, with bees? Oh, yeah. You may want to clarify that. Are kids going to be, is there a petting zoo for the bees? <laughs> Well, I mean, we do have a few hives out here, but we're going to put them in, like, protective equipment. We're just not shoving them out there naked and telling them to go pet some bees. Now, I would be on board with that. 
Give me a protective helmet. Give me a baseball bat, and I'll start hitting some beehives. You're not supposed That's to. That's the opposite of what I'm supposed to do, right? Yes, yeah, that is God. the exact opposite. Sorry, you know what? I see Miles... a beehive, and I want to knock it down. I'm sorry. That's. I mean, you're going to have kids that are going to want to do that, so how are you going to educate them? They don't do that. Miles is no longer invited to the orchard. I have a question for the adults. Is there a way? Do you teach the fermentation process of apple juice into hard cider? <laughs> kids well not well, to we the do, kids <laughs> not to the kids here, let me clarify obviously don't sell it to the kids yeah i know of course not i'm just saying <laughs> you and the other people there for fun are you guys making uh some hooch out of the apples it's an honest question <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah without a doubt so you know how to ferment ferment apple juice and make it into beer or well hard i don't cider? think well, i don't how... i just drink it I don't think that's how the process Atta goes. Boy. You don't just take an apple and all of a sudden it's beer, Charlie. Oh, I didn't know you were such an expert, Miles. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Right. Well, how how are you qual if you're not twenty one and you've never had a drink before in your whole life, how are you qualified to teach the fermentation process of an apple? Well, I don't teach it. I just tell them it happened. Okay, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we have poor listening we're, skills. We're making a lot of assumptions yeah. here. <laughs> so what's it like to own an apple orchard there? <laughs> Do you have any follow-up? Well, you know, I don't know how to answer that. I just work here. <laughs> Okay, so listen, we've got your go-to beer for your 21st birthday. What is your go-to shot? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't I don't know. I am I'm a big fan of just a straight shot of whiskey or rum. Whiskey or rum. Okay. All right. Have you ever mixed them? I've I've never mixed them. That might be something to try. No, yeah, maybe try no. that on your 21st. <laughs> that is, if you want to enjoy your 21st birthday, I, I recommend you do not do that. So do a shot of whiskey and then chase it with rum. Rum usually goes down a little easier. I can be your chaser. Have you ever done the trifecta in Wisconsin where you have three shots? What is? I'll tell you. You got whiskey. Well, what are the three shots? Well, you got yeah. whiskey, you got rum, you got tequila. In the whiskey is a night crawler. In the rum is a leech. In the tequila is a minnow. And then you take them all down. It's protein and intoxication. Have you ever done it? No, but that sounds like something I'm definitely going to have to do. Yeah, that, yeah, I think that's on your list that's, now. You, I, you know, the, I keep saying, have you yeah, ever done it? Like he's, right there. I keep asking you if you've drank these things, and I keep forgetting we're talking about your 21st birthday. So, of course, you haven't. We can't. Well, he also well, is well, from yeah, Wisconsin. I did grow up in yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I know. They're pretty liberal with their drinking laws. There. I know. Yeah. yeah kids they're pretty the liberal just, with their drinking laws. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't want to <laughs> you assume can't stop anything. stop that sentence because then it's not true. Well, it's a, you know, it's a purple state, you know, half and half. Well, yeah, anyways. <laughs> no politics. That's another good tip. Don't bring up politics on your 21st birthday. That'll ruin one. Have we given That's you right any way to a black eye right there? I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if someone starts talking politics, just start drinking more until you, you can't hear them anymore. Or y'all just forget what you're saying. Yeah, that that'll, too. that'll work too. Yeah. Were we helpful at all today for helping you plan this once in a lifetime monumentous occasion or no? Oh, I definitely say I got some good advice from you guys. Nice. And I le some. and I learned a lot about bees today. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you learned a lot. He learned that he wants to hit him with a baseball bat. Well, that's no. I said it. No. I didn't, well, I won't anymore. I learned that that's a bad thing to do. Yeah. We're all growing here today. So you, know? you got a little advice. We got a little <laughs> advice. I think it was uh, all in all uh, just really productive call here. We yeah. appreciate you calling in. Happy birthday. Happy yes. early birthday. Say no to Malort. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Well, uh, thanks for calling in. Have fun on your 21st. In reality, real advice here. Make sure you got a ride. Make sure you're, you got someone that's making sure you're safe. 
And uh, yeah, have a good time on your 21st birthday, man. All right. Will do. Thank you guys so much. You betcha. Yeah, we'll have see you. Have a good ya. one. We'll be seeing you. Do you remember your 21st birthday? My 21st birthday was nothing memorable. Just drinking. It was nothing crazy. Did you have a good one? Uh, Yeah, I went to the Nitty Gritty, this bar in Madison where you get a free beer mug that says it's your birthday or something. <laughs> and then I tried climbing a tree, uh, which I don't recommend. It was a small tree, but so still. What's your, I, I've never been a tree climber. Yeah. I feel like it's like you're either born with tree climbing skills or not. There's yeah. some people who can just scale it, no problem. Well, you always know the tree climbers because you'll be sitting out there having a cocktail or you're on a walk or something. They'll be like, oh, that's a nice tree to climb. You know, they'll just yeah. bring it up out I of nowhere. I would never look at a tree and go, yeah, I'm going to, that looks like a good one to climb. I see, I kind of am that guy. Okay. I, I do enjoy yeah. climbing a, a tree every well, now and again. That's good to know, yeah. Yeah, you got to know the rules of climbing a tree. You can't just go climbing any, any tree, though. Not all trees are uh, public property, you know? And so it's just important to figure out which ones are climbable. But what are they going to do? You, if you climb up, they can't get you down unless they call the fire department. I guess that's true. Yeah. So I think we should climb I a tree together. I think it becomes together. a standoff situation with the tree climbing. I guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should go climb a tree. Maybe that's well, a good Well, I'll team watch you climb exercise. a tree. I'll catch you if you fall. Oh, How's that's, that sound? That's so romantic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We can have a little uh, meat cute or whatever at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. That'd be Catch nice. You. Eyes lock. Yeah, a little yeah. trust fall. Yeah. I like Tractor it. Tractor beam sucked us right in. <laughs> what do we got on the line? Hey, this is Lucas. Lucas. Well, how are we doing today? You feeling good? I'm feeling pretty good. You sound mild? I am as well. I got Charlie here with me, too. Lucas, belly on hey, up. Hey, Charlie, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Belly on up to the bar with us. Tell us what's on your mind. What's on my mind? Oh, geez, I don't know. Looking for... <laughs> Maybe some some advice, some buy and sell. I don't know, a little combo. Yeah, both, what, maybe. Well, All right, let's get yeah. it done. What, let's start with the advice. What do you want advice on? Well, it's it's kind of a package deal there, Charlie. So you see, I, I'm a big coffee drinker, but my coffee pot broke. Ah, uh, oh no. Right. So I turn it on, the light comes on, but the hot plate doesn't heat up, but it doesn't make hot water. So what I've been doing is I just heat the water on the stove, put the grounds in the coffee maker, and then pour it over top, and I call it my poor man pour over. I, wow. I mean, that, I think. I don't know if we even need to give you advice. No, that's I think, exactly the advice we would tell you. Yeah, you just gave us advice, well, in fact. I mean, that was my question. Is, do I get a new coffee maker? Do I just keep doing what I'm doing? Yeah. Like, no, why fix what ain't? I mean, it, why fix what's clearly it, broke but it, still working? If it is broke, don't fix it. That's my philosophy. And you know, I can't really <laughs> complain about it neither because it came from the St. Vinny's for ten bucks a couple years ago. So. See, you know, Re return you are, on investment uh, has been great. You're a professional. Don't fix that system. Does it bring you joy to know that you could be spending a twenty bucks? Over at the Target to buy some, you know, the flea farm. Oh yeah, <laughs> wow. so twenty dollars at the flea farm. Flea farm where flea farm went available. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you're doing real good. You're doing good, and I think now is the coffee tasting right? Uh, you know, I don't really notice a difference, so. Nah, you stay wanna, on this track. Before You're doing he good. gave a solution, you want to know what my advice is going to be? What? It was not going to be great. It was going to be <laughs> that you just uh, cut off the bottom of the coffee pot, the, the part that's not working. You just put the, the pot in on the stove oh. right on there, and then you have it pour into that. It was, it was going to be a little more like you're going to have to finagle it a little bit more, but that was going to be my advice, but your decision was way better. Boil it first day instead of putting the glass pot on right on the stove. But, you know, if you do want well, to get a little, because it, it doesn't, it doesn't make hot water either. So the, the hot plate doesn't get hot and then it won't spit water over the ground. Yeah. So yeah. Really all I'm good for right now is holding the pot and holding the coffee ground. 
I mean, I think you found the best solution. I think that you don't need any advice on that one. Yeah, that's just what we call a Midwest French press right there. Yes. Uh, you're, you're doing it great. Now, you did mention that you had some that you wanted to buy, sell, and trade. Uh, would it happen to be this coffee pot? <laughs> well, see, that was that was the package deal there was, you know, if the advice was, hey, you, you got to move on, you know, let it go. Then it was. All right, well, what do you got for me? You know, what, uh, what do you guys got uh, some nice coffee makers that I can maybe buy off? Well, let's dive into the coffee maker you're probably looking for. You want one with a lot of flavor, and what I mean by that is you've never washed or cleaned a coffee maker, right? That's like the number one rule of having a coffee maker. So you're looking for something that's a little older that's still got that extra flavor in it, correct? Well-seasoned, like a, like a oh. skillet. Like a good cast iron, you know? Yes. That's exactly it. You want this coffee pot to be like that diner down the road that's been open for 100 years and never cleaned the grease off, right? You want this thing just flavored up. Oh, yeah. You, you know, the ones where you can't really tell if there's coffee in it or not because it's black either way. Yeah. yeah. It's, it started as a clear coffee yeah. pot, and now it's just, oh, you got one of those kind of uh, smoky glass looking thing now is what you're going for. That's exactly it. Now, tell me this. What kind of co- coffee grounds are you putting in this bad boy? Uh, I mean, I usually grind my own in the morning. Wow. That's some commitment right there. So you just buy something local and then just grind it up yourself? I just buy the bag of beans from Sam's Club. Ah, uh, Sam's Club. Yeah. Yeah. So just, it's just a he's, wheelbarrow he's, full he's, of Yeah, he's beans. economic. It's, yeah. I mean... You're doing it right, I think. Buying, buying low, drinking high. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, full tab investor. You can just call me the coffee investor over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you that's go. Great. So obviously, you're drinking coffee for whatever you got to get done that day. What do you do for a living? Uh, so I'm a pilot in the Navy. Oh, wow. That's, uh, oh, well, we got to ask. Did you see Top Gun or no? <laughs> Uh, of course, I saw Top Gun. I mean, so, are you kidding me? Yeah, I was going to say, are, are people in the Navy fans of the movie Top Gun, or they think it's kind of cheesy? What's the deal with that? Everyone I've talked to has been a fan. So, yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know. You don't want to sound like a noob talking to someone in the Navy about Top Gun, and they're like, well, that's just like not how it really is, you know? Uh, the second movie was actually very, very, well... Well, it was very accurate as far as how the actors portrayed it. Yes, you just you if you get not spoiler alert. Sorry. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. (laughs) I have not seen it yet. This is. Oh my god! You're ruining it for Charlie. I I know. Just hey, Jared, just bleep that whole thing out. (laughs) That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. It's not that important to the movie. No, no, it's not that. Well, that's a major story. <laughs> Unbelievable. The way, Unbelievable. The, way, <laughs> the way that Charlie said it, it sounded like he'd already seen it. No, so. I I was just asking theoretically okay. about the movie. <laughs> Honest oh, Charlie, you got to go. You got to go. You got to go. I, I, I to me. One, uh, one of my favorite parts is it's. It's not the story they made out of it. It's the actual cinematography because oh. they actually took these actors. They Well, they took these actors. They put them in the backseat of these jets as they were flying. So anytime you see them pulling like massive G's and stuff and their faces are getting all droopy, that's real life. They're, that's not acting. That's, they yeah, put them in the back and said, let's go. We're doing this. I've seen some behind the scenes footage. It's uh, it's pretty cool. And, and it also gives you a, a new appreciation for what everyone who does that um new appreciation for what they do you know oh yeah for sure uh wh- where are you um uh are you currently in the uh navy right now did you say you're active duty yes i'm down in jacksonville florida and next week i'm moving to washington oh wow what are you doing in washington what's the new gig flying planes for the navy oh, okay I, I, that's great. I didn't realize, uh, I, I was, well, that's top secret of military information, Charlie. He can't give you I information. Could tell, yeah. I could tell that by the way he said, flying, flying planes for the military. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was like, okay, you know, Charlie, I, I could, 
I can tell you, but then I'd have to. I'd have to kill you. Yeah. You would. <laughs> We can just, <laughs> you know, that that standard protocol. If you watch any movie, yeah, yeah no, well, I know. Well, clearly he doesn't yeah, watch. I don't movies watch any he movies. Hasn't seen it. We got that down. Well, uh, spoiler alert: there are movies that say if I'm gonna tell you, I gotta kill you. <laughs> so I said spoiler alert. Though. Apparently, every time you talk to Charlie now, you got to preface with spoiler mm-hmm. alert. Yeah, she just doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, know? no, I'm very out of the loop. Well, thanks for. Uh, well, I will say this. Thank you very much uh, for your service yes, and everything that you have done and are about to do that you will not tell us any details on, which I totally understand. <laughs> but thanks for disclosing the details of Top Gun, you bastards. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Hey, so, okay. No, whoa, that was don't drag me down with my life. Oh, you're right. You're right. No, all you said was it was great cinematography and you talked about hey, the acting. So I'm really, not dragging you into hey, that. I apologize. I'm your wingman here. And you're just going to leave me out to dry like that? Well, I don't know. Were you going to pipe up and say something? Leave me out to dry. Uh, horse of peace, apparently. It's yeah. a horse of peace. Horse of peace. That's the that is one of the greatest phrases on the planet. Thanks I got one more question out. about the coffee here. Oh yeah, we're so, back to the coffee. You know, okay, yep. being a pilot, is it like just working a, a normal, you know, like construction job? Are you filling up a thermos and bringing it on the plane with you? <laughs> I'm usually filling up a thermos and bringing it on the plane. Yeah, uh, some go. people are are not as bold. Uh, when you're sometimes in the plane for eight to ten hours uh, without a functioning bathroom. Ah, uh, yeah. What? So some some are not as bold. Well, you drink the thermos and then you use it as a receptacle for you know. Is that the move? Can you pull a, a trucker uh, bathroom break in a plane? I mean, we gotta we gotta we have a setup for that. Yes. Nice. It's like an we ice house. You just got two. Yeah. Well, okay. it's just like an ice house. You got a bucket sitting in a little uh, area, and then you just everyone get you just look away when they're doing it. Yeah. Believe oh. it or not, that's pretty much how it goes. There you go. <laughs> All right. I like that. Well, thanks so much for calling in. We really appreciate it. And one more time, appreciate your yeah, service. Thanks for the service, man. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Had to had to make sure you know I had my ducks in a row at the cost spot. I figured, but wanted some expert yep. advice. No, you you're, you taught us something here. You I, give the honestly. old thumbs up here. You are on the right track. Well, you know, I, I do what I can. I, I consider myself a giver, so you're welcome. <laughs> well, thank thank you for <laughs> blessing us with this call. Yeah, <laughs> you fly safe now. Fly safe. Watch out for yeah, watch out for, watch out for for birds up there. I'll do my best, gentlemen. All right. Have a good one, man. All right. Thanks, boys. Don't drink too much now. <laughs> we'll, we'll try. We will. <laughs> so you got to go see Top Gun. Yeah, apparently I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> critical Jared, Jared, plot no, you point. You got to bleep that part out. Yeah. 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 yeah please don't ruin it for anyone else. The way you <laughs> ruin it for your buddy here. And Tyler. Honestly. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, uh, you just announced it to the bar, too. I have, you know? t- I have tickets for Friday. <laughs> Friday? Mm-hmm. He's been waiting to go for a month. And three well, days before he's he going to go see it, you ruined the movie for him. All right. Incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I'd like to get a new co-host for this podcast. <laughs> I'm serious. It's not that important. I mean, it sounds pretty important. Yeah, it sounds very important. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of important. You want to tell me who dies as well? <laughs> <laughs> guys, the Belly Up podcast presented by Flea Farm. We're big Flea Farm guys here. Charlie and I and everyone at You Betcha, you, honestly. And uh, even back when I was working concrete construction, I'd go to Flea Farm. I'd get all my work gear there. And if you're looking for some new workwear, some new work gear, you got to head to Flea Farm. They got everything you need. I like to buy uh, all of my ice fishing g- gear, the bibs. It's a big thing for the winter. Go get it now. Be smart. Get ahead of it. You don't want to be headed out to the ice castle in January and you don't got any bibs on you. So go to Fleet Farm right now. 
They have all the workwear. They got everything you need. Um, and uh, or you're working maybe in the garden. You got a bunch of s- stuff from the summer. They also got canning stuff. So go get all the canning goods, the canning needs. You get yourself a pair of bibs for the winter. You get yourself some can canning materials for the summer. And all of a sudden, you're looking pretty good. You're having yourself a good, nice Saturday afternoon. So go to Flea Farm, the Man's Mall. They got everything you need. And, uh, yeah, I mean, gloves, boots, you name it. They're going to have all the work where you need there. So go to Flea Farm, get all the stuff you need, and uh, be feeling pretty good on that Saturday, especially with all that canned goods, canning needs. Have a good one. Hi. Uh, so my name is Kat, and I have a question about traveling with Wisconsin cheese. Traveling with Wisconsin cheese. Well, belly up and tell us about it. Yeah, what do you got here? What's the question? Okay, here's my situation. I am about to travel across the country, and several of my friends have requested cheese from the lovely state of Wisconsin. They're smart. And I want to know which... uh, They are smart. Um, I want to know what y'all's recommendation is of what cheeses I should pick out and, like, any safety warnings about, like, traveling with it. Okay, well, I... Should I, like, freeze it first, or can it be room temperature? Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. I'm I'm from North Dakota. I'm not as well-adversed in cheese as Charlie is, so I got to defer to Charlie on this one here. Yeah, so, um, first of all, you said y'all, so where where are you from? I caught that as well. Um... I work with a lot of different people who use a lot of different pronouns. So y'all is a really great gotcha. coverall. I'm That's... from Minnesota, but it's more of, I was like, it's very gender neutral. Everyone's happy. So there I you use got that a lot. It. You got y'all. Okay. So good, good deal. All right. So what I would say, first of all, is the cheeses you're going to want to pick. I would go uh, Colby. Okay, and then uh, cheddar. You got to get cheddar. Swiss mozzarella, gouda, pepper jack. Um, I love pepper jack. Pepper jack is oh, great. God, yeah. Um, and th- these are just um, for for your starters. And, and look, we can even dive down to the wormhole of the types of cheeses. But I think you get a little smorgasbord like that. You know, you're going to be doing fine in terms of transporting them. Uh, I think just like a a simple cooler with some cold beers in it and then put the cheese in there and then make sure it's a cooler that's, you know, got a decent amount of uh, insulation in the deal. And uh, even if it's just one of those styrofoam coolers that, you know, someone sent you a gift once for Christmas and you still have it hanging in the back room next to the box of boxes, pull that out, put some beers in there, put some cheese in there. And that is going to be your easiest, most reliable, most reliable transportation method. You don't necessarily want to put a bunch of ice in there because that ice can melt and then you got a kind of a mess with the That's cheeses and one. stuff. So or use one of those uh the kids bring their in their lunch box, the little ice pack. Thing. Oh yeah. If That'd you got some ice one. packs, that's good. And there is some cheese that uh doesn't do well being cold or whatever. And I'm not I'm not like a cheese aficionado. I just know the cheeses I know, you know. And yeah, so, I mean, you, you basically just listed off the most popular cheeses. So did I, mean, I? Yeah, basically. Don't call me out. I'm surprised you didn't say to bring like the Mexican blend cheeses as well. Wow. I, I you know what? I'm feeling very offended uh, by that. Uh, right I, now. I don't I don't want to add to Miles is trolling. You also kind of missed out on saying that you were a, you weren't a cheese whiz. So. <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. You that would have been great. Up. Hey, speaking of which, I do realize uh, that I did forget uh, some the most important cheese thing. You got to get uh, cheese curds and you've got to ba- w- w- where in Wisconsin are you planning on doing this? Um, I'm going to be leaving from the Milwaukee airport and okay. I was going to ask, am I a sinner if I pick up the cheese from the airport or do I got to go somewhere local? Wait, say that one more time. She a sinner. If uh, you're, are you a, Oh, are you a sinner if you buy cheese from the airport? Yes. Yeah. If I like do it there instead of like going to a local store, am I like a bad person? Yeah. You're not a bad person. You're just a person who prefers convenience over anything else, which is not bad. 
But I will say you should not get your cheese curds from the airport. You should find some dude in Cudahy selling them out of a cooler off the side of the road because that's where your squeaky cheese curds are going to well, be. Okay, so yes, I was waiting to interject here. If you're people who aren't in Wisconsin, they want the cheese, all that. You got to bring some squeaky cheese curds just to blow their mind. As soon as a cheese curd squeaks in your mouth, like like, if it sounds like you're chewing on a live mouse, that's what you want. And you're not going to get that if you buy it out of out of the freezer. You got to get that fresh from the cow over the past few days. And and really, at that point, it's like transporting an organ. You've got just a certain amount of time from from cow to mouth. Yeah, you that, better pray and be good before this because you got to hope there's no delays yeah. in that uh, airport of yours. Or otherwise, it could be disastrous. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, Wisconsin makes all cheeses amazing. So just because I listed off the most basic ones, I'm sorry I'm a basic cheese guy. <laughs> He's still Miles. offended by Do that. you understand? Miles just, ruined, <laughs> Miles just ruined Top Gun for me. So we've been fighting. <laughs> Okay, and so him bringing up this, oh, you just listed off the basic cheese things to a guy from Wisconsin. I'm not in the mood for it. Okay, so uh, so I'm sorry that his hostel hostility is carrying over from a caller previous. Yeah, I, I we're not supposed to let uh, other callers bleed into new callers, so I apologize for that. But I I'm just having a. Do you know how Top Gun ends? Because I do. <laughs> um, anyway, the most important thing is get those squeaky cheese curds. Make sure there's no flight delays and make sure your friends are answering their cell phones when you land. And by the way, they should be picking you up from that airport. So, yeah, so she's going, she's flying, so she can't bring a styrofoam. Sure you can. Check it. You can. Can you? Well, then T- the problem is TSA has the ability to look inside that, and I do not trust TSA to Especially not Especially not in Milwaukee. Yeah, they're going to take those. Yeah. Um. I, re- I mean, honestly, I remember the very first time that I heard a cheese curd squeak. Do you? I do. Where were you? I was in Wisconsin Dells area, and uh, it was a magical moment. I could not believe the squeak. Mm. I, did, I, I didn't believe it at first. And so make sure you get those because your friends, they're gonna, their minds are going to be blown by hearing this, the squeaky cheese curd. Yeah, it is a once in a lifetime experience the first time. It's like, where were you when JFK got shot? Where were you um, on 9 11? Where were you when you had your first cheesy or uh, squeaky curd? Yeah. Those are the three. Yeah, those are the three. Well said, Miles. Well, well said. I did book. I did book South, Southwest. I get two free bags. So I guess my second bag is. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Cheese curds yes yeah you got to bring one for your clothes and one for curds and by the way oh by the way i'm glad i'm glad you clarified this that you're flying do not put beers in there to keep them cold (laughs) those will explode and then you're in a world of you a world of hurt right there are you speaking from personal experience yes (laughs) yes i am yeah well that'll happen charles like yeah. I'm trying to like get on okay, his good so, side again after the whole Top Gun debacle. Yeah, Charlie, that was great advice, man. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Keep going. Wait, All you right, have so a follow-up? I'll yeah. chug the beers. Chug the I'll beers. chug the beers. Get some of those cooler things and put those in the suitcase, yep. and then go into the airport intoxicated. Gotcha. Heard yes. you loud and clear. Yep. Perfect. We are here for that kind of advice. Now you you, you know uh, you you did not have to chug the beers. Uh, that that is your own uh, doing. We would have recommend just you know purchase some. No, chug them. They're expensive at the airport. You're doing good. You're that there's is, no like clarifications, no edits here. People aren't talking enough about tailgating for the airport. You know why? Go you do the go agree. to the long term parking. Yeah. You set up shop about four hours before your flight. Yeah. Have a few brats. Bags. Play some cornhole bags and have throw down eight to ten beers. Yeah. And then head on in for your flight. Why aren't they people? People need to be tailgating for their flight. I totally agree. I told. And in fact, it, now, are you going to be tailgating now that we brought that <laughs> up as well? Okay. I'm I'm glad you brought that out. I've been tailgating alone 
before I go to the airport because I'm there fairly frequently and I love the idea of being able to do it with other people. So yes. I agree this should be a bigger thing so I don't have to tailgate alone. Yes. Right. So if you <laughs> Well, we're not gonna give all your flight information. It's just basically called <laughs> drinking alone, but yeah. you know. Yeah. But, well, if you're gonna be flying sometime between now and uh, I don't know, a month later here, just go to the airport, look around, see if she's there, be a friend. Bring some brats. You guys can have a good tailgate party. You know what? I'm going to say this as well, because in some airports, they have designated uh, smoking areas. And I'm if you can have a designated smoking area at an airport, you can have a designated area outside with just a tailgate. And the airport provides the tailgates. And it, it, you know, it has, yeah. and you can, and bags, and they got the whole setup. You can rent a tent. Yeah. You can, you can just rent a tent right there. Yeah. The games are on. They yes. should have a tailgating area at the airports instead of a smoking area. And then you can just sneak out there if, like, your flight gets delayed by four hours, you just head to the tailgate yeah, area. Yeah. Just go to the tailgate better than the bar. Yes. I think we're on to something right here. Why isn't this a thing in the Wisconsin airport? I we're going to make That's it a right. thing. We're going to put it right next to the recombobulation area. Do you know that the Milwaukee airport's the only airport in the nation with a recombobulation area? I don't know what that means. It means it's right when you... I thought you were joking. No, I'm not. When you're there, look for it. So it's when you get done taking uh, all your stuff off for TSA, you know, your shoes and, and, and the the suitcase or whatever. They have an area with all the seats. It's at every airport, all the seats, right? But they call it the recombobulation area. Just look for the sign when you're there. And, well, what and does recombobulation you, even mean? It means Charles? put your shit back on. Put oh. your shoes back on. <laughs> put your belt back on. Yeah, why know? don't they have snacks in the recombobulation area? Well, maybe they should. Maybe the tailgating area should be the recombobulation area. So talk to me about this. What is your... So my routine when I get through security is I'm trying to get my clothes on and my hat and all that stuff as fast as possible. I mean, what? Why do? Have you ever been at the airport when people are going too nonchalant with that? They maybe keep their shoes off for a little too long. Yeah, it's kind of gross. You ever had that before? I'm so focused on making sure my shoes are off that I'm not making PSA yell at me more than they're already doing that. I've never really paid attention to like what other people do to be perfectly honest. So, I'm just so it's so just me about my own thing. Yeah. So it's just me. Yeah, how much, by the way, that. you're like, I have to take, how much clothes are you taking off at PSA? <laughs> you kind of brought it up very well, you can fit. Like, you, you can know fit it's only more, shoes, right? Well, you can fit more into a carry-on if you wear all like your coat and your sweatpants and all that on the plane. If you wear it all on the plane, then you don't have to pack as much. Yeah, Miles in summer mm. just goes with his big parka, you know, because that's like another bag altogether. I mean. I guess it's just saving you money and it makes you happy. You're annoying at TSA, but you save money. So I'm happy for you. That's what it's all about. I'm happy for your friends because they're about to get some amazing cheeses. I'm excited to it's it's a joy to bring something back from a trip. And I really appreciate the recommendation because I feel like they're just going to their minds are going to be blown and they're just going to be so happy. I can't wait to see their reaction. Yep, you got your plan. You're going to go to the roadside cheese salesman. You're going to say, give me the best curds you got. Make sure they squeak. You're going to head to the airport. You're going to tailgate by yourself for about four hours. <laughs> then you're going to, and then you're going to be oh, on your God. way. And then you're going to be on your way. Just don't back your own car up. You know, it, just make sure you're following the airport guidelines. We don't want to uh, be advising any federal offenses, you know, by driving back in your truck up onto the runway or anything like that, you know. So if I get into any trouble, I'm going to say Charlie and Miles said it was OK. Whoa, whoa. Get away from me. I'm Char not doing anything wrong. How about just Miles Charlie said it was OK? Said that, not yeah, me. Just Miles. Yeah. OK. I'm gonna be like Miles said. Perfect. Perfect. We got it. As if my lawyer doesn't already have enough work going on right now. <laughs> Thanks so much for that. Well, You're welcome. we appreciate you calling in. We hope we helped you out here. Sorry, we started off with some very basic advice, but I yeah. feel like, you know, we worked our uh, way into something. What cheeses should I bring? Uh, bring cheddar cheese. I like cheddar. 
I like cheddar. I can't help it that I'm basic. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's all right, Charles. Yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate the advice. I think I'm going to stick with the squeaky cheese so I can just kind of do the one and done thing and everyone gets the same thing. No one gets jealous yep. and thinks I favor someone else. So well, I it, do appreciate and I get the whole ASMR experience. Yes. Oh, it's a great yeah. conversation cheese is really what it is. I like that phrase. <laughs> conversation cheese. That's good. Well, thanks for calling in and hopefully you have safe travels and uh, hopefully your cheese is squeaky. Happy tailgating. Thank you so much. You two have a great rest of your podcast. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Why'd you have to call me out like that? <laughs> I, was just like, I was going off the top of the dome. I was really, I was trying to think about the better ways to transport so here's the your, cheese. <laughs> here's your chance to redeem yourself. What's your favorite, most exotic cheese? I'm basic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I like cheddar. I like cheddar, and that's okay. You're a cheddar head. Yeah, and by the way, just because you name basic cheeses doesn't mean... Hey, I'm that a basic guy, too. I like okay. Bush Light, and that's it. All right. I mean, well, that is, we're basic get, guys. But, but, but the, the way we make it in Wisconsin is better than anywhere else, okay? okay. It's I about like the that. location. It's not like we're inventing a ton of different cheeses in Wisconsin. All right. We just make them better than anywhere else. We didn't invent mozzarella. That's an Italian cheese, but we make a lot of it. That's true. Hey, get it? You're right. Jeez, Bush Light did it better than anyone. No, no, go. Wisconsin don't go doesn't. putting those words in my mouth. Wisconsin. Wow, your leg is warm. Wow. You just beat up against my leg. Started uh, talking about tailgate, and I got excited. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> blood started running hot. Charlie, what do you think of horseradish cheese? Hor oh, God. horseradish is amazing, hey, guys. Horse horseradish is uh, one of horseradish. Horseradish is one of Wisconsin's. Um, Biggest exports. Hmm. Yeah, and it's it's got the heat of a habanero. I mean, it's amazing. I love horse. So they radish. don't export much then is what you're saying. No, they export a lot, oh. actually. I'm going to export this microphone <laughs> somewhere. <face>. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that's the callers that we got for you today. But, Charlie, you got an important night ahead of you. Yeah. What are you doing tonight? I'm actually going to go see uh, someone <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, I don't know who dies yet, but you know, Miles hasn't finished shutting his mouth for the well, day. There's a so. lot of day left. I can still spoil that for I you. I know you can. So I'm going to get out of here and go see that before you do that. But, uh, you know, it's nice to another episode. Do you want to go? Here, do you want to go to the movies tonight? You want to go together? Yeah. You and me? Yeah, we can do the How popcorn trick. How cool would that be? <laughs> oh, what's the popcorn nah, trick? Yeah, listen, you bet your radio find, found where all podcasts can be found. Is that where you have the that. popcorn on your lap? Yeah. Like the pizza box? Perforated edges. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Honestly. All right. Um, got to grow up. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get a review from you. The, the yeah. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. yeah. I bet you'll be like, wow, I didn't see that coming. I'm I'm honestly still annoyed about it. Okay. I, that, that'd be I like, do feel because it was not intentional. I did not try and spoil that for you. Because I actually I didn't see it coming in the. Yeah, you didn't see it coming. No. How nice was it when you didn't <laughs> see that coming? It was such a nice surprise in the movie. Now I'm going to be waiting for it the whole time. Are they stealing that one? Or are they taking that one? You know, you never it's annoying. Know. And it's a three hour movie. It was it. I don't know. No, it's not even close. Oh, that was Batman. That's Titanic, dude. Oh, Batman. The latest Batman was three hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, um, I think I'd rather spend three hours at the bar than at the Batman movie. Yeah. So. It was a good movie. It was a little weird at the end, Batman well, was. You want me happen. to spoil that for you? Batman you guided them all out with a torch, and it made no sense. Okay. Well, I won't be seeing that one, then. <clears throat> Are you guys going to do a Midwest Batman anytime soon? Yes. I forgot God, about that. We have that God script. damn it, Jared. Oh, you don't want to do that? I thought well, that was we had moved past Midwest All right, Batman. fine. I'm fine. I'll do it on my own. I'll like play I, both characters. I feel like I've just been disappointing Charlie all day today. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do the bit. You want? Fine. I'll do it on my own. Where's the cheese curds? <sighs> you, want me to, you want me to see these cheese curds? disappear <laughs> just give me a little ranch 
<laughs> we could do it. We oh now you now yeah, he's laughing. Now we can do it. We okay. Do it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. As always, thanks for tuning in. I already said that. Uh, but tip your bartender too. Tip your bartender. I like ending on it. Tip yeah. your bartender. Tip your bartender. And don't that's my twenty. And uh, tell your folks it says hi and uh, watch out for them deer there. I actually like that accent a lot. Is that a character? <laughs> nice. Do that again. Do that again. Watch out for them deer there. Yeah, yeah. Even more, less smiley, more grizzly. Yeah, watch out for them deer there. That's a great character. You got to do I that sound character. just like you. That's why you like it so much. <laughs> Sounds just like you. Does that sound like me? Don't say yes because he's he your said, yeah. boss. He said, you oh, he said, no, he's, thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. Stop paying these guys. They just agree with you. That's bullshit. You hear that? I said stop paying you guys. No, I didn't mean stop paying. Well, right. Okay, you keep paying them. Stop agreeing with him. <laughs> hey, dear guys, stop doing that to us over now, here. that's better. That's a better oh, impression. Oh, my ears. I'm so sorry about that. We got to end this. All right. See All how right. I get picked on here at the Bellied Up Love Podcast? Love you guys. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>